I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On Life Through, episode 150, Running Scared, Trump Withdraws from the Second Presidential Debate in 2020. Well, 150 is a nice round number. I'm glad this podcast, Light On Light Through, made it this far. And I thought I'd take a little break for this 150th episode from the science fiction, the great science fiction that I've been recently reviewing here in this podcast and go back to something else that I've been doing a lot of in these past few months and that's some political commentary. And I have to say, I was not in the slightest bit surprised to hear earlier this morning on the news Trump saying, I'm not going to do a virtual debate. He said that to Fox Business anchor Maria Bartiromo. Trump continued, I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating's all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate? It's ridiculous. And then they cut you off whenever they want, unquote. So that last line from Trump, and then they cut you off whenever they want, That, I think, is really the nitty-gritty of why Trump withdrew from this second presidential debate scheduled to take place next week. The election group that decides and sets all the rules on the debates had earlier today said that this second presidential debate would be virtual, That was to protect the health of everyone involved in the debate because, as far as we know, Trump is still able to communicate and therefore infect other people with the coronavirus. Even though he's out of the hospital and he's back in the White House and he says he's feeling much better, that doesn't mean to use the medical term, that his viral load has decreased to the point where it's no longer able to infect other people. So that's why the people who set the rules for the presidential and vice presidential debates, that's why they wisely said this next debate set to take place next week would be virtual, not physical. Now, I and many others have been calling for moderators to have the technological capacity to cut off the microphones during the presidential and vice presidential debates. Trump interrupted Biden just about every time the Democratic candidates started talking in their first debate last week, and Pence repeatedly talked well over his allotted time in the vice presidential debate on just last night. Moderator Chris Wallace in the first debate and Susan Page in the vice presidential debate last night complained and chastised Trump and Pence, but to no avail. A capacity to cut off the microphone would have been useful indeed and would have well served the goal of the debates to give the American people and the world, for that matter, a chance to see and hear the candidates discuss the issues. Now, of course, there's no guarantee that a moderator, in person or virtual, would use the option to cut off the microphone of a bullying debater like Trump or a debater who persistently talked over his allotted time, like Pence did last night. But without such an option, the moderator's ability to rein in abusive and errant debaters is very limited. I would have liked to have seen Wallace and Page stand up and refuse to allow the out-of-line candidate to continue talking but I recognize that that's far easier said than done. 
A cutoff switch would surely have helped, and muting someone in an online conversation is easier and far less confrontational than in person. Obviously, muting people is done all the time in Zoom meetings. And none of this is to mention, again, that online debates cannot be vectors of COVID-19. But clearly, Trump cares as much about personally spreading the virus as he does about adhering to the rules of civil debating, which is to say, not much at all. So, with his poll numbers plummeting, and his desire to keep faith with those who like his truculence and feed off it, Trump ran scared and pulled out of the upcoming virtual debate. To which I say, good riddance, and I'm looking forward to Election Day, November 3rd. The Light on Light Through podcast Well, I hope you found this little episode of Light on Light Through of Value. I'll be back here soon, either with more political commentary or maybe another review of another great science fiction series on television. Who knows? In the meantime, stay safe, be well, and enjoy. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson spills code about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. 